All right, so we should be live now. So we'll just kind of wait, see what happens. People come on, they start filtering in. Usually these things, you start them a little bit late. People tend to come, you know, you want to tell them five minutes before. <laughs> I had a couple of emails that went out. Oh, did you get the email that's saying, like, we're starting in five minutes? And it was actually, like, ten minutes ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I see some people starting to join now. Hey, guys, are starting to join. Just say hello in the, the comments. Um, if you're on Facebook, it's probably best to come over to YouTube, to just come over to my YouTube channel. Um, there should be a link in the Facebook group for that multiple times to come over to YouTube um, and comment because we can read your comments and respond better uh, on uh, YouTube than on Facebook. So, yeah, definitely. Hopefully come. That's some of the West Coast crowd will be a little bit more reasonable time at 6.30, right? Yeah, I just saw Raj uh, appear. Hey, Raj, how's it going? Just, uh, Corey's here as well. Vandals himself. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Still starting to turn up, yeah. This well, is the first time we've done one this late, right? Like normally we do them an hour, yeah. an hour early. So yeah. we'll see. thirty minutes for an hour. When those yeah. busy kids are around, it's it's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I see, uh, James just came on. Um, hi, how's it going, James? Should we add him to the feed? Um, like, you want, we could he could just hang out. Yeah. 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 All right, we're going to add James in as well. How's it going? You're live now with us. We're good. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, good to good to say hello. And um, we're just kind of waiting for people to show up. It looks like a few people are watching now. Tom from Miami is watching. Raj is here. Corey's here. So, yeah. So I think the idea was to do a bit of a short presentation, right, Lance, to do your um, kind of what strangles are and then kind of go into what we've been doing and then talk a bit about the strangles calculator that um, Josh has got going. So yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. Welcome. A lot of Theta Traders members joining in. Nice to see all you guys. I like to do these the live streams for general public. I like to do these for members as well. You know, just helping out whenever I can here. Um, so yeah, we're going to, I'll start the presentation in about a minute or two, let people Struggle in a little bit, but um, I've been looking at different strategies. I constantly look for new things. I even have one or two more on the back burner in my brain that I haven't told anybody yet. I'm not sure if it's viable yet. Sometimes that happens where it may not be viable, and then I don't even tell anybody. Um, but other times, I think if it might work, I usually try it out on paper a few times first, and then I'll do it in the real deal when I get to late paper slash doing it for real, I'll definitely let members know. So we're going to be looking at strangles today and also the covered strangle, which is just a slight modification to the strangle. And it's turning into one of my favorite strategies out of all of them that I've done so far, to be honest. Um, it's very flexible. You could do different strikes. You could do different expirations. Um, as it is right now with MES, we're at a price where it's pretty much I'm happy whatever happens tomorrow. Like, I'm not going to stress out at all if the market goes up, if it goes down. Like, I'm perfectly fine with both situations. So we'll look at the numbers and why that works. And it's, again, a very flexible strategy. It's really hard to actually do this wrong <laughs> or do it where it's going to make a huge mistake as long as you're willing to, like, accept the initial parameters of it. So, cool. yeah, a few more people looks like they're – strangling in yeah it's always a good strategy where it's hard to do it wrong right that's always a good uh, <laughs> good quality to have so that's pretty exciting i know you've been excited about it because you've been messaging me every day for the last last yeah. week check it out russell it's like eight percent in two days and you're like right yeah it's pretty good so pretty when i get excited good. i tell a lot of people but yeah <laughs> yeah all right let me um do this quick presentation it's not a huge thing here but um let's see if this works it might just be my full screen Shortly, um, yeah. The moment it's your full screen now, it's the covered strangle thing. So, I'm going to add it to the stream and I'm going to just make it maximized so people can see it. So, hopefully, that's showing up for everybody. All right, so education time a little bit. We're going to go over what the covered strangle is and the basic strangle to um, do all these trades in thetatraders.com. It's a educational resource. We also look at different recommendations, how the market's doing every day and find some viable strategies so pretty much to be selling options in order to get that consistent income that we want. So I notice a lot with buying options, like if you buy a slightly out of the money call, um, it's usually very risky. Like not only does the stock have to go up, but it has to go up at a certain time period as well. 
So we usually like to take advantage of the theta decay of letting options just get lower and lower in value over time. And that's just taking advantage of that to get that consistent income. So a covered strangle, it's essentially a combination of simply a covered call. Covered call is when you buy 100 shares of stock or you can buy a futures contract. And then you sell a call against it. It's a very conservative strategy that a lot of people use where if the stock happens to go up, then you might lose your shares, but you received your premium. You might receive a little extra capital gains on it. And as long as you're happy with that return when you set it up, then it's a good call, right? You also are going to add a short put to it. Now, by adding the short put, you will get more income in because you're getting in income from the call and the put. And that's one of the ways to greatly amplify the returns, as you'll see shortly. It is a slightly bullish strategy in most situations. Um, you do best if the stock or contracts for futures go up slightly in most cases. But you could also design it where it could be a very neutral strategy and you could make quite a bit of money as well. Now, obviously, it does increase your premiums over just a straight covered call because you're making money on that put as well. So... One of the big things for doing these is you want to do this with stocks or ETFs or even futures. If you're willing to own for fairly long amounts of time, if needed, and you want to be able to own at least 200 shares, not 100 shares when you're first starting it out. If you're doing with futures, you would want to hold at least two contracts. So what a lot of people do is they might start the covered strangle. Um, they The stock goes down a bit and they're like, oh, I don't want this anymore. And then they end up getting that extra 100 shares. If it's starting to make you stressed out where you get that extra position, then it'll probably not the right situation for this particular strategy. Okay? And there's other strategies you could do for things like that. Sell credit spreads that are short term. Sell cash card puts way out of the money. So there's different things you could do with different stocks. But you should be at least medium term, you know, slightly bullish on these particular positions that you do it with. So how do you set it up? It's really straightforward, and I'll show you guys on Thinkorswim shortly. Um, you can buy 100 shares of stock first. You're going to sell a call against it. You know, when you sell a call, you do have the obligation to give up your 100 shares of stock if it goes above your strike price. You can sell them into money if you want. You'll get more premium that way, a little bit of downside protection. Um, as you'll see in the numbers, you could actually still profit if the stock goes down a little bit. And you could possibly sell it out of the money. If you sell out of the money, you won't make as much income in the beginning, but you will get more possible capital gains if you lose your shares. Then you're just going to add a sold put to this covered call. Again, it's just a covered call with a short put with it. Now, I typically want to do around 0.1 delta in most cases. So then it's a good risk return in terms of getting a good amount of income in and also being able to possibly average the price of those two positions pretty well. You could sell puts higher than 0.1. You would make more income in the beginning, but then your average would be a little bit higher. If you sell a put really, really low, you would make less money at first, but your average could be different. So again, very flexible strategy. And for different people's risk tolerances, they could actually do different strikes than what I personally recommend. Here's an example I just did yesterday. Uh, Coca-Cola, pretty dependable stock. I think he'll be drinking Coke for many, many decades from now, right? It was at 59.57. Um, I think I bought it at 59.48. So today, market didn't really move it too much. So I bought 100 shares of it. And then I sold a November 18th call against these shares. This will be the covered call portion. And I sold it pretty much at the money. So 59.57 is the current price. I sold a $60 strike for $104 in premium, which is a pretty good premium for a pretty stable, not very crazy meta Amazon dropping like a rock stocks like you've seen in the last few days, right? After that, you also sell a, I just happen to sell the same expiration put at 56. So you get a good amount of downside protection on the second 100 shares, and you're able to take in an extra $29 from this, okay? This is another example with Bank of America. I did this on um, Tastyworks. Uh, the stock was around 36 and change or so, I think last I checked. Able to buy 100 shares around that price. 
sell the 36 strike. So this is actually a little less than 36, I think 35 and change. And you're able to take in $136 in premium for it. Um, this one was was with margin. I wouldn't necessarily do it with margin, but if you're very sure of the stock and the position and the expirations, it could be okay in some of these strategies because it's a pretty conservative strategy that we're doing. It would only use up about $1,700 to do this first covered call. And then you're just going to add another short put to it. You could get an extra about 32 bucks in 22 days. So if you got $136 for your covered call, make $32 more on the short put, add those up, you get $168 in premium. It only used up $1,676 plus the $432. Used about $2,100 for that trade. And you can make almost 8% on your money in about 22 days. And now, again, these are conservative stocks. They're not high-flying tech companies that will necessarily move a lot. But as you can see, making 8% in 22 days, I'm going to be pretty excited about it, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you profit on some of these? Um, you're receiving your premium twice, covered calls and short puts. If the stock is flat and stays exactly where it is, you just get to collect those premiums. And again, you can make a good amount of money on those premiums, possibly 8 to 10% a month if you set them up right. If the stock goes up, you're going to lose your covered call. The short put would also expire worthless and you keep all that premium. And then you can just do this over and over again. If the stock goes down, but still above the short put. So let's say it goes down a dollar or two. Your short put can still expire worthless. You keep all that premium. You still keep all your premium in the covered calls. And then you can still do the same strategy again. Sell a new covered call the next month. Sell a new short put the next month and then get those incomes in two different ways. So what, uh, just quick managing, if you um, short put is worthless, but you sell the stock, again, just sell another covered call, sell another short put, it kind of just said that. Um, this is my last covered strangle I did. This was with MES uh, futures for the S&P 500. We initially started it where I bought the contract at 37.68, I sold a covered call against it, pretty much at the money, 37.70. I sold a put against it too, so it's a covered strangle. And then I received 64.75 in premium, but there's a six, sorry, a 5x multiplier on these. It ends up being $323 um, when I took the premiums above. This is also a very good trade. In that particular example, it didn't hit the 35.50, but the market did drop a little bit. So it went down to 36.50. Again, a little bit above where I sold the put. So it collected all the money from the short put, collected all the money from the covered call. And then I just sold another call, <laughs> sold another put. In that case, we got, excuse me, 22 plus 7.5. These are your numbers multiplied by five. And then in the very end of it, I was able to get out of the trade because right after this expiration, it closed right above the 3770. I think it was like 3772 or three. So I was out of the trade. We we're able to take in all this money. We did show a slight loss selling a call a little bit below where I bought the contract at. So I did lose 18 in premium here. But the reason why I did it is it gave a lot of income, $110 in a week. So I was willing to take that slight risk to lose the contract. In the end, it made about $245, I think, in two weeks' time. And it only used about $1,900 or $2,000, give or take. So it ended up being about 8-point-something percent return in two weeks. This is a pretty exciting strategy to do. Yeah, pretty nice. Um, so we're going to leave it up for any questions. If anyone in the group has any, anyone from current members, Theta Traders, anyone from the public, yeah, so there's one from David I just put up. If you can read it out because I can't see it. Oh, okay, yeah. So it says, um, guess the perfect thing would be to sell the call on an up day, sell the put on a down day, but I don't think we could time it that good, right? Theoretically, that would be pretty beneficial to do it that way. But, yeah, you're right. The timing's hard to make that work. 
And I personally rather not spend a lot of time looking at the market in a minute to minute to see, all right, now there's a good time to do this. So I usually just sell the call and put pretty much the same time. In the last coverage triangle, I did actually wait a day because I had an eight days out and then I had a seven days out. So I waited the next day to sell the put because it actually did drop a bit. But most of the time, I just do it at the exact same time. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, so does anybody else have any questions? I see that Raj is typing. I'm just reading it now. Yeah, so Lance, real quick. So, yeah. so you don't set them at the exact same time? I usually do set them at the exact same time. Okay. In this particular example, I just waited an extra day. Okay, but if you do it the separate days, it would show up to get a show in this covered strangle like that? Yeah, you would still see it in your positions with the same DTEs, and it would still okay. be a covered triangle. Um, I actually think I sold one of these a day before because I was able to – I was essentially waiting for the put to expire worthless. It was still 100 points out of the money, so I just decided to do it the day before, I think. Okay. Um, but, yeah, usually you, you don't have to do that at all. You can just wait – for the short puts to expire anyway, and then just set it up the next week. Like I'm on a current covered strangle, it's the exact same thing. The short puts can expire worthless, even if the market drops about 4% tomorrow, I'm still mm -hmm. gonna have that expire worthless. So I decided just to sell another short put um, that Friday instead of Monday, just to get a little bit of extra theta decay. Okay, but so technically you could kind of do it like David just asked, you could I know you can't time it right. If you had a super high day, you could set your call in, super low, set your put, and then right. go out and do that. I see. Yeah, you could definitely do it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but it just becomes the cover strangle because you're using the same strikes on just the call side and the put. Yeah. Uh, same stock, I mean. Yep, same stock, same expiration dates. You could even fiddle around with different expiration dates, but you okay. don't need to make it super complicated. You're just strangling the same, the same stock. Yeah, um, these are all the same stock. And then. So Sorry, sorry, Russell. Oh, I was just going to say another question from Thomas. What if the put is exercised? Yep, if the put's exercised, then you would be getting your two contracts. Let me stop my share. All right. So if the put is exercised, good question. We're going to be having an extra either 100 shares of stock or an extra contract. So when that happens, you want to take the average of both of those positions. So Let's say you bought a stock at 20, you sold an 18 call and get sorry, put against it. You'll take the 20 plus 18 and average that, it'll be 19. That'd be the average of 200 shares or two contracts. Um, you could also consider it as you can subtract the premiums you receive too. So it'd be a little bit below that average. Right. And that's, that's another good point of the strategy. If you're willing to stay in it a few weeks, possibly a few months. You could significantly lower your cost basis week after week by just constantly selling these calls and puts. Yeah, so that's why it's good because if you had like a stock you're willing to hold for a while, 200 shares, you know, you do the cover call, you know, you sell it high, you're selling for more, and it goes low, you say you bring your average down. Yep, exactly. That's it's a win win. Weird. I mean, again, if you're willing to hold the 200 shares or two contracts, like as long as the stock doesn't completely plummet, like you shouldn't be that upset if you get a sign on that short put. Yeah, because then you just lowered your average. So yeah, you're pretty much starting it at half a position, mm -hmm. willing to go to the full position if the market just drops a lot. That's a very yeah. good. Uh, next question is from Aaron. Uh, Aaron's asking, "What's your average recommended time span to expiration?" Yep, there's many different things you could do with this. I'm personally doing these weekly. Um, it really doesn't take much time. I do them. Sunday night usually with the futures, or you can do a Monday at open. It takes maybe two, three minutes to set up. And then I'm waiting until Friday right before expiration to see what I'm going to do. Um, I'm currently in one with MES where I'm just going to wait until tomorrow, maybe 30 minutes before close. And then if I happen to lose my contracts, I'll just lose them, do a new one Sunday night or Monday morning. If it happens to be lower and I'm pretty sure the short put will be expiring worthless, maybe I'll just sell another short put Friday to get a little bit of extra theta decay on it. Cool. So, um, you could easily do it with monthlies if you want. Um, some conservative investors might even go a few months out. You wouldn't make as much premium per, say, day because the theta won't decay as much, but you could still get pretty good returns and 
You can even do these a few minutes every month if you wanted to. doesn't take much time at all. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, David's asking, are you just doing MES? Only? Um, you could do it with MES is what I'm primarily doing it with now. I was considering doing one with MNQ. That's the triple Q um, futures. You can do it with MCL. That's the oil futures. Um, now, and Tastyworks, I know they let you do it there. Thinkorswim, you could buy the MCL contract. I was having trouble selling calls and puts against it. I'm not sure if that's available in Thinkorswim yet. Um, there's others. You could do RUT. You could do IWM. You could do individual stocks. I'm personally doing it mostly with MES, though. But, again, it's wide open. You could do it in any stock or ETF or a future you want. Now we're getting bombarded with Raj. How's it going, Raj? I'll start putting up some of your questions. Do you like selling the covered call at the money? <laughs> yeah. So if you're more of that, like I want an even bigger win and get 10 plus percent in the week, you can sell a little bit more out of the money because you can make money on the contract moving up or the stock moving up. So that'll be some capital gains as well as a premium. I like selling that at the monies personally because you get a good amount of uh, premium for that strike. And it's not as of a bullish strategy as if you sold way out of the money. So if you sell a really far out of the money call, um, you're pretty bullish because you're not taking in a ton of money in premium. So I personally like the at the monies, but yeah, it, there's nothing wrong with doing a little out of the money too. Uh, more from Raj. Do you ever um, buy to close the covered call or the short put, or do you let these expire worthless? I was personally letting them expire worthless for the futures to save a little bit on commissions. Um, but I would add on a second one while the short put is still on. Like if MES is at 37.50 and you sold a 35.50 put literally expiring that day, it's not going to drop 200 points in an hour or two, right? right? So in that case, I might sell the short put for the next week during that day. So I'll theoretically have two short puts on for maybe an hour or two. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not buying the close these, but you easily could do that. It's just a little bit more work on your end to buy the close. All right, sell another one. You can just let them expire and go from there. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, so Corey's mentioning that he just got an alert that Musk took over Twitter. I thought that happened much earlier in the day. I heard about that. I'm not well, sure if it's official or not. Oh, maybe. official, like, yeah, because I saw the thing with him pulling in the sink into the yeah, into sink. The sink. yeah um, earlier. So Elon Musk and me have very similar humors, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so another one from Tom: Are the futures too volatile to do the strategy? It's a good question. Yeah, um, yes and no. It depends on what your risk tolerance is. Um, doing them on MES where you're taking in $80, $100 a week in premiums, I don't personally think is that risky in the end. Obviously, if MES drops a few hundred points in the week, you would be down a bit. But like in my initial um, position that I showed with you guys, I was down after the first week. I'm not going to lie. Like Even though the premiums I received were pretty big, it went down more than that. But I wasn't stressing out about it. I didn't even get my second contract yet. And then I just sold another string, cover triangle off it. And, it. and then the market happened to rebound after that. But yes, that is one of the possibilities. The market could just drop a bit right away and then stay very low for a long amount of time. In that case, you may not make a ton in premium week after week because you don't want to lose a lot of money on the actual contract or not. So if you want to be more conservative about it, definitely do it with individual stocks. Um, possibly lower price stocks. Like I showed Bank of America, KO. Um, I'm willing to take a little bit more risk for a fairly small amount of my position personally for these MES. Well, the advantage to the MES, like maybe we should talk about that a little bit, about why they're so good because the, you know, about the buying power and things we're talking about. Yeah. So with MES, you could buy a contract for about $1,400 or so, give or take what the price is. And then if you sell a, about a 0.1 delta put against it, that's another about seven eight hundred dollars. So you're looking at around two grand for the whole position. You are pretty highly leveraged, so I'm not going to lie about that. Um, if it moves a bit, it could theoretically hurt. 
but you're able to use that leverage to get a very high return. And I think the cover strangle is a really good strategy to, you know, make it a safer trade with that additional leverage that you're having. Uh, Raj, again, the short put, are you selling at the money or at the money? I'm not selling at the money short puts. That's, that would pay a lot in premium, but I'm not willing to necessarily get those two contracts right away. I'd rather be able to get that second contract pretty far out of the money. So then the average is a lot less. Like I'm selling these short puts 200 points out of the money or so. So again, if you're buying that second contract or start getting assigned the second contract from the short put, that's much lower than the at the money, your average will be lower. So that's why I don't really mind much if I get assigned on the second one. I just lowered my average of both. So uh, Casey's here. Um, how's it going, Casey? I hope you're feeling better. I saw some health health related stuff on your Facebook page. I hope you're recovering nicely. Um, but you're asking what account size do you recommend for ES instead of MES? All right, so for MES, if you're gonna do a full covered strangle, conservatively, you should use around $3,000. And the reason why I came up with that, I mean, that's a floating rate, but buying the contract about 1,500. If you get a, if you sell the short put, it's another about 7,800. So you're at 2,200 or so. If it keeps going down from there, then you would need more additional funds to take care of the margin requirement. So 3,000 would cover pretty much every situation I could think of for one contract. If you're doing it with ES, pretty much multiply by 10. So you're gonna need a quite a bit of funds, 30,000, and you won't need it right away. You'll probably need about 20,000 to start it and then have an extra 10,000 leading on the side. What's good about MES is you could do a lower account sizes and you could stagger when you join them too. So if the market starts to turn middle of the week and you did an MES, then maybe add the second MES at that point. But if you do an ES one, unless you have a really large account, it's hard to like really fiddle around with those adding on in the middle of the week type things. Cool. Uh, well, maybe now would be a good time to introduce uh, Jimmy um, to talk about your experience in theater traders and if you've tried any of these strategies yet and that kind of thing would be pretty interesting to hear. Yeah, so I met up with Lance probably two months ago, three months maybe. That's more than that. I think we're early summer. <laughs> yeah, you know better than I do. I can't. Yeah. Um, I don't remember when that was. I actually thought you were in another group. Um, so I haven't messed around with all the strategies. I started out with the cash secure put, just to learn how that worked. You know, doing the safer side there, getting that two percent. Then I got into the the credit spread side, which has been a lifesaver for me. Um, yeah, you know, I've tried other ways and just it just wasn't really working well for me. I had you know. Obviously, it was a bad market this year, but things were just tanking. Couldn't get it going. So I messed around with his credit, uh, Lance's credit spread uh, style, really focusing on the deltas and the thetas, how he uh, preaches. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, those are the two I've mainly done a lot with. Um, I, I, I just messaged Lance before all this about this strangle he's been mentioning. So I'm hoping to give that a shot a little bit. I haven't got into the futures yet because I just, I, said, I just don't know if they could swim that well. But um, I'm interested to learn this one. Very cool, yeah. And uh, Husker Not Josh, he's back. So I think um, you're muted at the moment. All right, now I see you. Yeah. So you had something to talk about with um, the calculator or something, right, for the, um, for the, the future spread, uh, the future strangles? Yeah, so with the MES futures, um, I just thought it'd be really helpful to have a calculator that kind of calculates – what your break even is, um, what potential profit is, and then if that second, the second contract gets assigned for you to kind of have a calculator that averages those two contracts out. And so I will try to show it here. Just a second. Sorry, this is the first time I'm trying to share my screen. So Yeah, no problem. So you go down to the bottom and it should say present and then share screen should pop up as the bottom of that menu. Yep. Okay, give me just a second. All 
You know, Corey asked to use the PCS. Yeah, right. Jimmy, you use a lot of those, put credit spreads, right? Yeah, so sorry. Yeah, I, I do a lot of the credit spreads right now because I said the buying power is a little less. You can get a little more premium at the top, but you've taught me how to do it away from the money, be a little safer. Um, and with the Theta traders itself, just the group, you know, communication is key in anything you're you're invested in working on. So having the help has been big. You know, I've done some other other groups and stuff. They just ignore you. So the fact that you are hands on right there with it, it's been very helpful. It's kind of it saved my account, actually. Yeah. It, uh, you, one today, you, you posted one today on QQQ and we're like, yeah, it looks like a good trade. So are you guys able to see anything. No, nothing's popped up for me. So normally when you hit share your screen, I'd see a pop up and then I could add it to the stream. Um, okay. Do you want me to do it? I think um, I, I think you sent me a link right for it just a little second ago. Let me see. So I can just pop it up if you want. I think I have it. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, so this is my first time sharing. So it'd make me restart Chrome. I mean, I can do that if you want. Uh, just give me one second. I think um, you got spam, Russell. <laughs> I think this will open up. Just give me one sec. So, save. share screen. So yeah, that that's the problem for me. Is it's it's not in it's coming up in Chrome. So I need to switch it to Firefox. Or no, I'll do it real quick. All right, you do. <laughs> How many Sorry. people does it take to share a freaking spreadsheet, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and like I said, this uh, this is a fairly new laptop, so I haven't ever shared anything from it. So it's okay. Do you guys see my end? Yeah, I just saw it pop up, so I'll add it to the stream now. All right, there we go. So it's kind of small, but that's as big as it can make it. Can you zoom in on your on your sheet by any chance? Like, yeah, there you go. Start making it a bit bigger. All right, that's that's good. Yeah, we can start. To so see Josh, this. you might want to walk around through it. I, I was filling around for the last few days. This is brand new to Theta. We didn't post it yet, but we're finishing up the fine tuning of it. Mm -hmm. So it says we have the covered triangle here. You can write down when you got into the trade, how many days you have left. You would type in the bought contract, so what price you bought it at. You're going to put in the sold call price. The reason why we're doing that is if there's a net gain here, so if you're selling at 3800 but you bought at 3783 you would make some profit here if it closed above 3,800 expiration. But the calculator will actually figure out the total profit, including this. And then you're gonna put in your premium received. This is the premium from selling your call and selling your put together. So essentially what's good about it is you just put these numbers in and then it'll show the break even price. I like that. <laughs> yeah. You can you hear it? Yeah. Okay, so it'll show the break even price where since your bought contract um, plus, sorry, minus the premiums received. So this minus this is your break even. It does figure out your profit, again, including that extra sold call if you sell them out of the money and you want to possibly get some gains there. It'll calculate the profit there for you. Um, so I have two different ones going here. This is the current one I'm in. This is another one I'm testing out. And it does show the profit above sold price. Here's another good part of it. If you do get assigned on the contract, so that means you sold the put and it happened to drop and you get assigned on it, you would put in the price you get assigned at. So let's say I sold the 3,600 put and it goes to 3,599, you get assigned on it. You just put in the assignment price of what you sold put was, you put in your bought contract that you originally bought it at, you put in the premium that you received so far, and then it gives you the average of the two contracts. And I'll yeah, talk that, to you before you, right? That whole thing besides like, I'm trying to think because, let's see. It should do pull over most of the stuff from the first sheet for yeah. you. So. This is my rough draft. I think I might have fiddled around with it, but we'll make sure we get all the kinks out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you literally have to put these in and then put in the gold. I yeah, gold yeah, because I just looked at my updated one, so. All you actually have to put in should be just the assignment date. So, like, if the oh. shortcut got assigned, you'll put the date, you know, for example, say 1028 tomorrow or whatever. And then you'd put the the assignment strike price should just transfer over for you automatically, too. So That's awesome. I didn't realize that. We're going to definitely fill around with it. 
Yeah, that's a good one. You could also track if you're doing these for quite a bit of positions. It'll show you your break even, your profits. This will be the yeah. column you focus the, on. This third one should be like so if you have two contracts, then you can kind of keep track. I have four, four and five rows just in case like you don't get rid of it the following week either. You should be able to just drop drop the new break even down to the contract average line and it'll just keep track for you throughout until you finally do get rid of the contracts. So yeah, that's a good point. So at, again, if you have the two contracts and you're just waiting, playing a little defensive, selling two calls against it, you're just trying to lower your break even more and more. So then when you do see that eventual rebound, you could make a good amount. So if you're able to sell it at the break even, you would get the premium collected. That'll be your profit. And you could decide to sell above it too if you need to to get some extra gains on it. Very cool, very cool indeed. Yeah, awesome. So, um, so you guys that are in um, theater traders at the moment. Like, I don't know how many of you guys are actually in the uh, inner circle or lifetime yearly uh, system, but this is all going to become available inside the inner circle. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, is is Casey in the inner circle? I'm guessing he is. <laughs> I think he's probably in. Not sure. I don't remember the time I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna add a whole bunch of stuff to the inner circle. So if you're in theater traders as it is, it's um the idea is that we're adding all of these strategies into the inner circle part of theater traders. So Casey's asking now. Actually, uh, I'll put this up. So. Um, what are all the strategies that Theater Traders are doing now? So I can share my screen and we can go through exactly what Theater Traders has in the main part, but then some of these strategies that we're talking about are only going to be available for Inner Circle members, and those are people that are paid for the year up, up front kind of thing. So it's like a, an advantage to, to, to paying a little bit more. So, uh, so yeah. yeah, so, yeah. I, I got in just last night just reading through the, the strategies in the Inner Circle, so there's a lot of new stuff in there. Yeah, I think it's it's awesome. This is it's like this strategy alone is probably worth a lot just from, from yeah. the upgrade size. But there's other stuff too, which is cool. So why don't I pull up my screen and we can kind of chat through like just like what you get in theater traders for people like Casey, but also like what you get in the inner circle as well. So just give me a sec. I'll try and find my screen and share. Let's see. Present. Share screen. All right, here we go. So um. Yeah, so you guys should see the Theater Traders website up here. It starts up here. Um, but the area that I'm most interested in talking about at this point is the inner circle, because that's really what we're talking about here. This strategy, um, which is pretty amazing, um, is an add-on to Theater Traders. So we can talk a bit about this, but let's look at some of the basics you get um, as well, just in the main Theater Traders, which are, which are awesome. So... It's trying to make it as bullet point as pro like as possible here. So you guys let me know if there's anything missing here that I've maybe like somehow missed it <laughs> over the last um, few weeks that's been added. So you guys are still doing the two high probability cash secure put trades every day, right? But you're also given uh, spread options on those as well, right? Yep. Yep. So that sounds good. Um, so let's see. Just check where we are. Somebody's full. Yeah. So um. That is the first thing that people join for, like the basic theater traders, is because it's so chilled out. You basically set these things and wait a week or two and then cash out, hopefully for 50% plus <laughs> plus profits. So that was kind of where the, the service started, right, Lance? That was kind of like the first. Yeah, we were, we were just doing the cash your put credit spread one a day, yeah. every day. And that's what I mostly do on my personal account. But I know a lot of members, they, they do those. They do the zero DTE as well where we every day look at SPX, we're looking to get about 2% on our money every day. And yeah. then you pretty much get in and out and usually an hour or two in most cases. Yeah, after yeah. reading the after reading the ebooks on those and you give the option trades, it makes it easy. You don't have to learn you don't have to know it right away to get into it. You know, you give the the trades that are pretty uh pretty safe. And then uh you can start making your money there and then read the ebooks and strategies and um you know, learn how to do it yourself a little more. Yeah, I know Jimmy does a lot. He was doing a lot of the credit spreads, cash grid puts, and now I think you're starting to dabble in the zero DTE, right? Yeah, a little bit. I just, you know, Bobo keeps getting all that free lunch. I just want one time. Yeah, you'll get your free lunch tomorrow. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. 
the free lunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's important to to point out that it's probably not a good idea to just join for the zero DTE trades, for example, because you don't want to be going full account into the zero DTEs. You want to spread out your money right between different strategies here. Yeah, the so, reason the reason I started doing this because I've I've made enough for the last two months using the credit spread and cash secured pussy all taught and have oh, a lot to play with. So. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's good. So, like one strategy is feeding into another strategy. That's that's pretty cool. So yeah, like I said, I started I started slow with the cash secure put, and then the credit spread slowly, and then kind of just played from there. Yeah, and I, I think people are familiar with this style of trading. If not, I already put a link into the um, chat box about where you can find our mini course where you can go through and kind of learn the absolute basics of what we're talking about here. Just in case you're listening and you have no idea what we're talking about, it took me. Many, many years of trading before I came across this style of trading. So um, to me, it was kind of gibberish for the longest time. So for people that don't have a clue what we're talking about, what a cash secure put is and all that, I did put a link in the chat box. And if you want it again, I can repost it and you can go and check it out um, for like just some general information about these types of trades. Um, so these are the things that you get in just regular um, theater traders. Uh, I don't think I'm missing anything here, right? It looks like I've covered pretty much yeah every, that's what all the quarterly numbers do receive yeah so that's if you do quarterly however what we're talking about today is this inner circle membership um, which is a fancy way of saying you get everything you ever wanted <laughs> um and you get it um with um some extra strategies in, involved there too and that's where this idea of doing these covered strangles comes in uh, lance is doing those exclusively in there um, and they're doing extremely well, so it's something that would be worth just for those. But you also have a whole bunch of other things going on as well, like your workshop stuff, uh, full access to, to all of your trades, including longer-term holds, and your famous one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls to help people when needed. So you want to elaborate a little bit more on like kind of what else is included in there? Yeah, so in the Discord, we have different inner circle channels. One is just my trades, and anytime I do any trades in any of my accounts, it could be long-term buy and hold. Like today, I bought MPW, a REIT for medical. I bought Microsoft because it went down again, and I think it's a good long-term hold. Like, I'll post that. Um, any strangles that I do, anything, there's not, like, an official recommendation that I give. I'll just post it for everybody to see just so they could either learn from what type of strategies I'm doing. They could easily join as well into those trades if they want to. Um, my Lance's workshop is kind of my, like, brainstorm my brain just like lets out stuff throughout the day because i think about this stuff all the time and i'm like oh that sounds good i'll just tell everybody about it <laughs> so i'll say like yeah i'm thinking about selling this call at this particular strike price maybe if it goes down to this price and like it it's pretty like i wouldn't say all over the place but it's more of like this is what i'm thinking maybe i'm going to try out a new strategy in the next few weeks or so and this is how I'll set it up. Um, the access to all trades, again, that comes with the inner circle, like every single trade, even Roth IRA trades I'm doing, like buying Microsoft and holding, um, those will be listed as well. And then we do one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls. If you join on the yearly, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me, and we could go over anything you want. We get Zoom calls of all different types of questions, like how do I deal with the margin requirements I'm currently in? Like, what is the best strategy that I should focus on right now? It's like, okay, I'm good at this particular strategy. What are some other ways to open it up? We had one recently that was doing mostly zero DTE, and they were looking for more longer term, similar strategies that we do. So we went over the longer term puts and spreads and whatnot. So the inner circle membership gets all those additional benefits as well. Yeah. And the cool thing here is like, um, what you're offering here, and I've been reviewing services for five to 10 years now, these prices are like the lowest that I've ever seen for this type of service where you'll actually get on calls with people, like you'll be really helpful, and, you know, help everybody on this type of level. And so I think really it's worth the annual subscription. So to get access to the inner circle, all you have to be is an annual subscriber. There are two tiers here, so you can join annual. So every year you pay 647 bucks. That's actually down 20%. Uh, from the listed price just a, a week or two ago. And also the Inner Circle Lifetime. So that's $14.97. You're saving 30% on the current lifetime at the moment. So I'll put a link in the chat in a few minutes so you can go and sign up for these things. If you're already a Theater Traders member, 
Um, reach out to us. We might be able to do payment plans if you really want to be in with the Inner Circle guys as they add more and more stuff, like more and more futures trades, more and more um, strangle type stuff. Because my guess is this is going gonna, is gonna to slowly grow, right, Lance? It feels like there's going to be more and more Inner Circle stuff as you come up and test and come up with new strangle strategies and things. Is yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, my brain is constantly thinking about new things. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them might be just in test phase. Let's see how it works. And then we notice it's not a great strategy. But right. just leave it in the back burner. Sometimes we'll see one like the covered strangle. And in the workshop, I was posting a lot about my thoughts before I was even entering the first few trades. And then as I was in the covered strangle throughout the week, you know, my brain is just constantly on like a bicycle wheel turning and turning. So <laughs> on a random Wednesday, I'm like, right now you could close at this percent profit, but I'm going to wait until Friday because I could get this extra X percent profit. So constant things that are coming up in my head. And in the inner circle, we do get a little bit more of that, like smaller attention, people that are really focused on these things. Um, they they could write on these channels as well. And we, and we obviously respond to those. So. Right. And the, the good thing is that, and you know, I made basically paid for my annual subscription the first couple months, just doing your strategy. So that's not even getting into the, the new one you just taught. So, you know, you get that covered pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, and yeah, so um so like I was saying, like the um the price in here, so um for me, like I've I've reviewed people like David Jaffe and stuff, and David Jaffe will charge three hundred and fifty dollars for a month. Um Lance is charging six hundred and forty seven dollars for a year, and I've been in both services for significant periods of time, and it's an absolute bargain for what Lance is offering here. So um, especially if you upgrade to Inner Circle. Uh, and also remember, we will do payment plans. So if you really want to be in here, but you don't want to pay $14.97 up front, for example, just contact us. We've done payment plans for a couple of members already. So um, help spread out the cost um, kind of psychologically and nothing else, right? right. So, yeah. Uh, so let's see what questions we have. It looks like... Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's see what strategies you're using. So... Corey would love to link up with um, Jimmy and see what strategies they're using and how they are working. So maybe you guys could chat. Um, you're both in theater already, though, so <laughs> you need to reach out. So, hey, Jimmy, Corey, I, I don't I know what you're uh, sorry. I can share your usernames on Discord if you want. Yeah, no, we're welcome to. I I been, I'm, I'm gonna say next, if, if anyone has any message for me, because I'm in the inner circle and member here, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, yeah. So um, let me see. So let's share the link for Theta Traders. So for anybody that's watching this that hasn't ever been on the site, uh, you can come and check it out. Right. Corey, it's JWS with random numbers after it. One, two, three, four. It's really hard to forget. Yeah. <laughs> really creative. And Corey's the Vandals, right? The Vandals. Wait. So I just posted the theatertraders.com website in there. You can go and check out the different subscriptions. Reach out to um, to Lance or myself. Let me just get my screen sorted out here, um, so that you can you know figure out if it'll be right for you. I see a question from Casey. Let's just put it up. Does Inner Circle include the annual subscription, or are there two separate fees? So that's an interesting question. We're not doing it the typical way. So most places would say, hey, we have an Inner Circle. It's worth ten thousand dollars. That's what you have to pay to get in, right? Um, the way Lance and I decided to kind of do this is say, well, if people are paying for an annual membership, um, then they can have inner circle access. Um, and same with the lifetime. Uh, obviously, the lifetime is forever. <laughs> and you'll, the, 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 the annual will have to renew, obviously, if you want to stay in. Uh, so the choice is really yours, which one you want to do. Um, you know, Russell, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off, but Lance... Maybe I'm wrong or not. I don't want to say this the wrong way. Even through the chaos earlier in this year, you, your strategy still worked, right? They did. Yeah. We're, we, this whole year and 10 months, we had two negative months, but the negative months were under 2%. So it wasn't a dramatic loss. So that's and huge for you know anyone in a normal market. Like it was dropped 40%. You still find a way to stay above. Yeah. Like there were some months where like our target's around 2.5% a month. Um, we had some months that were pretty much break even, and we also used we had two slightly low in the months, but most of the months have been you know anywhere between 
like 0.5 to about 3%, give or take a month. Yeah, that's a, that's saying a lot right there because I know I, I was, like I said, I joined you, I guess you said early summer. I, my, yeah. my account was crushed before I jumped in. So that's a that's awesome just right there. Yeah, another thing to reiterate because uh, there's a lot of members that might be quarterly watching right now and you may not be aware of the inner circle. Um, if you're in quarterly right now and you're paying for the quarterlies, it ends up being more than paying for the yearly and you're not getting access to the inner circle as well. So if you're liking Theta Traders and you're currently in it and been in it a little bit of time, we've had quite a few people upgrade to the yearly because one, you save money in the yearly compared to paying quarterly. And two, you get that inner circle. You'll get that one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me. You get all my thoughts, all my trades as well. So, Yeah, exactly. It's kind of a no-brainer, really. A lot of people have been upgrading recently. We've had yeah, we had a lot. A lot of people jumping into the inner circle. Um, and I think it's the right time to do it as well, just because it kind of is a new tier to the whole thing. And it, it does seem to be something that's going to be super valuable. Um, and honestly, I don't think it can stay at this price for very long, right? I mean, you're yeah, giving no. a, lot, a lot of value for the price. So it's pretty good. Yeah, so I'm in debt to you. You saved my account, so. <laughs> that's always good yeah i saw your testimonial yeah. jimmy <laughs> yeah. it's like you saved me i owe you everything <laughs> i was down and it was a luckily quick turnaround when i got on the land strategies or data trader strategies it's yeah. always good always good all right guys well i think um not seeing any other questions you guys listening do you have any more questions you yeah, asked if i use thinkorswim i do use thinkorswim for my credit spreads um, I use Schwab for my cash secured puts in a Roth IRA. And I do use um, Tastyworks for the futures because the Tastyworks commissions are lower for futures than compared to Thinkorswim. So I really use all three. You don't have to do that, but you would get um, like, you could do all of them in Thinkorswim if you wanted to, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to save a little bit on the commission, so I use Tastyworks for that. Uh, Aaron's yeah. asking, sorry, they, she's asking if the annual um, trades are the inner circle, but just for one year. Exactly. It's just a one year membership to everything and in, in, um, including in, inner circle. Yeah. So if you're already in the quarterly, you're getting the cash your puts and spreads and zero DTE. If you upgrade to annual or lifetime, we just add on the extra channels to the Discord. You don't need to do a new Discord login or anything like that. You'll see additional, those inner circle channels pop up. You'll still get all the trades that you're normally getting, but then you get all these other trades for futures and buy and hold and all that as well. Yeah. I think one one benefit you said for, I mean, they're essentially the same, but your annual subscription, people get like one live Zoom with you where like if they go inner circle, they can do it period multiple times per year. Is exactly. that right? Yes. Yeah. So and we, and we that's also a benefit if you, you're really looking for in-depth help and like like the chat and like on a video call with lance and he'll he'll do that unlimited with you on the inner circle so right like we we also do the one-on-one -on -one zoom calls for anyone that's in lifetime or annual and we also do smaller group inner circle zooms as well like we had one a few weeks ago where a little bit more um sociable i guess there was only about three or four members and we're just deep diving into the questions you had. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, can't say enough. The communication, your help is a uh, is big. It's a, a lot of people needing this stuff. Yep. It's not a not easy to pick up, but you have the patience of a saint. So that uh, that sure. help. Aaron, um, I think Aaron might be a little confused. He's saying she's interested in annual, and so I could work up to inner circle. If you join annual, annual, you get the inner circle. So you just don't get the extra calls, right? That's the main thing. No, in annual, you get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me as well. Right. But there's more, you're, you're more available to the inner circles that do lifetime, right? That's what we're talking about. Um, if you needed multiple, yeah, multiple Zoom calls, then you would want to join the lifetime. And obviously with my schedule, like we'll try to set up a time that's good for both of us. But you could do as many Zoom calls as you need. For annually, you get at least one. If you put me in a good mood, I'll give you a second one for free. <laughs> uh, well, comment section is getting spammed tonight with Tinder hot adult dating sites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. 
There's better and more ethical ways to make money than spamming comments, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I haven't seen it happen yet. It's the first time. Um, just uh, the first time I've seen the chat get spammed so much. We, we must be getting pretty popular now, right? Oh, yeah, it must be. Uh, yeah, taking off, hitting the big leagues. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, so, Aaron, if you want to upgrade, just um, just message Lance or I, and we can, we can switch you over to the – uh, inner circle annual if that's what you want or inner circle lifetime if you want to get the extra extra calls or whatever so uh, you can also do the you know a lot of people have been doing this is like they're saying hey i want to be in the lifetime but i don't want to pay 14.97 up front can right. i split it into four payments and we've done that with several people recently uh, where they get the advantage of the whole inner circle and forever and more more uh, lands contact time help so yeah just um, we can customize payment plans as well. It's like not set in stone. Sometimes we'll split it into four uh, payments or you know whatever kind of works for you know. We just set up we just set up one from someone in Australia and they were worried about the currency rates, so they decided to split it up it's more beneficial to them. And we're very open to that. So. Yeah, so Aaron's saying four payments would work. So yeah, just. Um, just uh, send either send me an email because I'm usually the one that takes care of like the payment side of things. So um, I'll type my email for this. Um, I have so many emails. I'll just put the one um, that I usually use. So protonmail.com. So just email me at stuckelectreview at protonmail.com and I'll get you sorted out with um, with a payment plan for either annual or inner circle uh, lifetime if you want. Just let me know. And I'll get that sorted for you. Pretty good. Cool. All right. Any other quick questions from anyone else in the group? Nope. Don't think so. You did a great job of explaining everything. So everybody's just like, okay, got it now. Yeah. <laughs> Go off in a merry way. So, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Jimmy, it was good to have you on. It was good to say hello. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Nice to. Nice to talk with you all. Yeah, it's good talking to you again, Husker Josh. So, yeah, happy to happy to help out. Yeah, nice cool. to finally uh, talk with you, Josh. I've seen your name pop up enough, but yeah, 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 pretty good. All right, guys, we'll have a good evening, and we'll see you in Theater Traders tomorrow, at some point. All right, thanks everybody. All right, all right, thank you, thank you, Lance. Cheers. Bye.